There has been a huge backlash against the 1%. And we heard President Obama in the State of the Union call income inequality the defining moment of our time. Is he right? Well, we're in a capitalistic system, you're always going to have lots of income inequality. And so I don't think anybody's saying we're going to get rid of that. It's absolutely the case that taxes will have to go up to close the government deficit. And uh, I certainly think the rich should pay a larger share of that increase as we ask everyone uh, to make some sacrifices. The illusion that even those increase on the rich alone, that's going to close this budget deficit, that's not numerically correct. And so, you know, although there's an important discussion to be had there, the real thing is to tell the American people how far short we are and actually show a numeric plan that closes that gap. Do you support uh, the Buffett rule as the president laid it out in the State of the Union? I think there's still a lot of questions about exactly how it plays out, but saying that people that make over a million dollars in the U.S. a year should pay at least 30 percent in taxes. Well, I think there's no doubt the rich are going to have to bear more of an increase. And the idea there should be more parity between the dividend and capital gain rate with the ordinary income rate, I think that's the direction things are headed. And that would get rid of some of that regressivity that uh, has been pointed out. Are people like you, and I should say, are the wealthiest Americans paying enough in taxes? Because there's, there's few people in your or Warren Buffett's tax bracket, um, income bracket, but both of you are pushing to pay more. Should, should all wealthiest Americans pay more than they are now, even if they're paying in the 30s in terms of percentage? Well, once you, if the very richest almost never pay up in the 30s because their income is so heavily uh, based mm -hmm. on dividends and uh, capital gains. And even people who work in the finance sector and what you think would be ordinary income, like a hedge fund, they manage to have that classified as a capital gain. And you know, I don't know where it'll all come out. It's not my area of expertise like global health. But if you want financial stability for America, mm -hmm. uh, taxes will go up somewhat and the rich should bear uh, a somewhat disproportionate uh, piece of that, that increase. Do you think that the 99% versus the 1% conversation is an important one to be having right now? And if so, are we having it in the right way? Well, I don't think there's some magic dividing line. Uh, and a lot of the concern has to do with fortunes that were made in the financial sector. I, I, I disagree that there's some big backlash against uh, all the people who've done well in America. I don't think that's right. I don't think it, it would be right. But you know, the, the, the idea that the, the, the tax for these things needs to be at 15 percent and Somehow, you know, people won't go and create jobs if that was raised up to a higher number. You know, that clouds the idea that there is a, a gap. And eventually, that deficit gap, we have to deal with it. And tax increases will be a, uh, at least half of, of what, how that gets done. But the argument that we're hearing from the two Republican frontrunners right now, Mitt Romney and Newt Gingrich, is that it is to dramatically cut taxes, to um, Newt is saying eliminate capital gains taxes. Uh, Mitt Romney paid an effective tax rate of 14 percent last year. Is the Republican argument economically viable right now on the tax front? I don't think anybody has come forward with a, a full plan to solve the deficit uh, because, as I say, even just this discussion about the rich, even if you go pretty far there, you'll still see the numbers are very large, particularly with the medical cost increase. And so, you know, it's a, it's a mathematical question. Uh, you know, there is the, the fact that our economy is quite weak. So how quickly you bring in these things that balance the budget, that's another, uh, another discussion. But when people talk about reducing taxes, I wonder what they're saying about the, the deficit. You know, it, that is an important issue. And, you know, it used to be the parties. You know, we're agreed that was an issue. Now, a little bit, uh, it, it, neither one is really being concrete about how it adds up to solve the, the problem. That reducing taxes will spur growth in this country and uh, incentivize people to invest. If you have no capital gains tax, it doesn't matter how many capital gains there are. You've got to fund the government uh, somehow. So it's just, it's just math. And, uh, 
you know, I, I think, you know, people should say who's got this equation down and is, is really going through where the, the revenue is going to come from.